Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well and happy Saturday. I am madly in love right now with Glow in the Dark and I really want to explore after doing this video. This is my last video, I'll link it here if you missed it. I finally got me some Glow in the Dark vinyl. Now that was from Tech Wrap. I actually ordered it on Amazon. So I will be finishing those cauldrons and posting some photos. But I really wanted to use the Glow in the Dark powders even more after doing that and seeing the intense glow. So I figured I would just have fun, just chill out, relax, have fun, and not really put too much thought into what I was gonna do, but I knew I wanted to do some piping, some piping designs, some really fun, cute, do you know what I mean? Chill, <laughs> chill piping designs. But I am gonna stick with the same color. I know that sounds awful. A few of you did ask if, um, they're all going to glow in that color or if they all glow the same color they will all glow in the color that you see in the tub and I will be doing a video next week showing you every single color and how it glows just so that you can get an idea of how it works in resin and how it also works in jesmonite my plan here was to do some jesmonite piping and then backfill the coasters with the resin as well now this coaster mold, haven't mentioned it yet, but this is my go-to round coaster mold by Molds and Shapes. Of course, you get that 5% discount. I will link them in the description box below as well, including the Let's Resin 10% discount, which will also be in the description box. Here's the thing. When it comes to adding the powder to the jesmonite, as you would, so the jesmonite is a one point. 1 to 2.5 ratio. What I'm doing is I'm leaving out the last 5 grams of powder from the jesmonite to add in my Let's Resin Glow in the Dark powder because I did find that it thickens up so fast you just don't have time. So I left out the last 5 grams of jesmonite powder and to add my Let's Resin Glow in the Dark powder. Now I'm not saying I added 5 grams of the glow in the dark because I didn't. Do you know what I mean, guys? I just didn't want it too thick because I'm going to be doing some piping. Okay. First up, I really didn't know what I was going to do. I was kind of sitting there thinking, what do I do? What do I do? Uh, spiderweb. Just do a spiderweb. Now, I like informal, random spiderwebs. I don't like your generic, stereotypical spiderweb. Do you know what I mean? I like random. And if you really look at a spiderweb, it's so random. It's not that kind of really symmetrical even lines so the first up was a spider web i loved it this is the second coaster and i'm already having problems i'm already i just don't think i just don't think it's gonna be right if i ever have a video where there's no problems or there's no lessons to be learned from what's going on in the video it's already clogging. I, I had to keep wiping the tip of my bottle because I could feel it already thickening up and clogging. I have sped this right up as well. I did not draw bats this fast, <laughs> but I really wanted to try that bat design. And yes, I Google referenced the outline of a bat. I'm not just drawing bats out of my head. I was like, okay, remind me again, how do you draw a bat? So I am referencing some pictures. Then I saw this absolutely gorgeously adorable cute image of a ghost. Oh my gosh. Guys, I don't know what's happened to me. Do you remember a couple of videos back? I said, I'm really not cutesy cutesy. I'm not that kind of girl, but I am right now. <laughs> I really am right now. These ghosts, how cute are they? I did have a few issues with the eyes of the ghosts kind of closing up. So I had to get the cotton buds out, wipe it. All the while, my heart is racing because I know that this jesmonite is setting in the bottle. The bottle is getting warm. That means I know I haven't got much time. So I'm kind of panicking at this point. And I quickly draw this awful... <laughs> awful off-centered bat and I'm like why Claire why just you could have just left it you know it would have been okay to just do three coasters again like the last time but this is when I realize oh it's on the verge of too late guys the jesmonite is thickening up to the point where it's now time to fill these shapes in. And here is lesson number one. If I can share this with you, then we can all learn together. And if you try this technique, you will know not to do it the way I did it. When it comes to drawing your shapes and filling them in, if you want your outline to be different to the in color, that's fine. You can fill them in anytime you want afterwards. But I wanted my outline and my infill to be the same color. But what's happened here is 
the outline is almost dry at this point. Now, if you've seen any of my Jesmonite piping designs on my channel, you'll know that the outside edge line dries and it leaves a mark around it like a sweat line. And because I'm now coming in five minutes later, filling these in, it's kind of too late for them to be one blended block color. You know what I mean? You'll see what I mean on Demold. So if you are doing anything like this, and if I've inspired you in any way, um, <laughs> inspired your heart palpitations from the stress that this brings, having to work so fast with piping bottles, um, if I've inspired you in any way, my advice to, to now, now would be to draw your outline, fill it in straight away. Do not wait, do not wait for that outline to dry fill it in immediately fill it in and blend it with the outline so that you do not get any differentiation between the outline and the infill because that is what I didn't want and it was at this point the horrendous bat bottom right um, do you know what the bat's not horrendous if I'd have got it central if I could have just got it in the center of the coaster it just wouldn't have been this bad at all but anyway do you know what we live and learn we're all lessons all lessons remember no mistakes just lessons handmade with love not perfection <laughs> You can see me frantically trying to get the last dregs of jesmonite out of my bottle. Now, bear in mind as well, I need to get that bottle to the sink immediately to wash that tip. Otherwise, I've lost that bottle. Luckily, I ran out there just in time and I was able to declog the, the nibs from both of those squeezy bottles. So they are still alive and thriving and doing well and I can use them in a future project. Now, take a breath Claire <laughs> I decided to go with a resin backfill again because after I did the cauldrons I really did love that kind of contrast between the shiny super shiny surface of the black resin against the matte glow in the dark jasmine I really loved it but I decided to go purple it does look like I've got black resin in this cup but I haven't that's just the bottom of the cup is black resin cured so it makes the whole cup of clear resin look black, but it's actually not. It's pure clear resin in this cup right now. And I'm adding in some purple mica powder alongside some purple Hemway glitter. It has been so long since I have used Hemway glitter. And yet it is up there as my absolute all time favorite glitter of anywhere. Um, I used to be a Hemway affiliate, but sadly they did put a stop to their affiliate program, but I loved being an affiliate of Hemway. Honestly, their glitter gave me so much joy. So yeah, I feel like it's been almost a year of not using glitter in any of my videos. Now, when I use glitter in my resin, I do tend to pack it in there. I pack it in. I'm not light on my glitter. I'm not tight. I, I literally love saturating my resin with glitter. So the more the better as far as I'm concerned, but it depends what, you know, the overall look is that you're going for. But how cute are these ghosts? I cannot even cope. I just went super slowly filling these coasters up because we've got all of the little crevices, the little nooks and crannies and the little detail of the pipe designs. And I wanted to make sure that that resin had time to get in there. So I did pour quite slowly. I've also learned another lesson here. So I will share this with you. In hindsight, I would have gone in with a little cheap brush and just rubbed around the jesmonite to get rid of all of the bubbles that you will see have created. But again, not a mistake, just a lesson, just a lesson. There are ways and means to fix these, but will I do it? Probably not. But check this out. So when you get a Moulds and Shapes mould, quite often it comes with a central cavity that you can fill. I've never actually filled it before, but so cute. Anyway, D-Mould, loving, loving these two designs. I absolutely love the random the random spider web is up there. I absolutely love it. The bats, I think they're a super cute, very Halloween-y, very, you know, typical Halloween-y kind of design. But this is where I noticed. Okay, let's learn together. <laughs> All of these holes. All of these holes were created when I poured the resin over the jesmonite, not giving the resin enough time to get into all of the nooks and crannies before it was too late. And really what I could have done was get a cheap brush, one that's not ideal, but you know, disposable, not in an ideal world, I know, but just, just to rub the resin, first and foremost, rub the resin around your jesmonite piped design. That will stop any of these big, large, I mean, I'm not giant, but any large holes forming around your jesmonite piped design. If you go in first with a little bit of a brush and just, yeah, 
rub the resin see along here all of these little air pockets have formed now I, that's possibly air pockets coming from the jesmonite out into the resin um but honestly it doesn't happen to me all the time so i think it's probably trapped but this one here oh my gosh i could not cope with the cuteness of this one as soon as i demolded this one I now feel like I need to do more. I need to do so many more and explore this pattern of the ghosts because I think it's the cutest thing I've ever seen. The bat on the right hand side, we do not need to talk about this. This is where you can see the outline, the piped outline, unfortunately has come through on every single piece here, except the spider web because I didn't need to fill the spider web. But sadly, we can see very clearly the outside edge, the outside piped design of the eyes and the outer edge of the ghosts, the same as the bats. It kind of cured and dried too much before I did the filling in, which has left us with this sweat line where we really don't want a sweat line. So learn from me, you know, learn from me. Again, this is all new stuff really um I've done so many piped jesmonite designs before and quite often I'm doing an outline and filling it with a different color so that kind of sweat mark doesn't matter but it kind of does really matter here I wanted them to be a block color now I could do a couple of things here I could if I wanted to go over them with a black Posca pen I know I'm holding a white one but I couldn't find my black at the time. I could black Posca pen the eyes, give them a little mouth, maybe give them an outline to take away from the fact that we've got that sweat line. But as they are, I think they're so cute. Let's check them out in the dark. <laughs> Guys, I have to explore this more. And I'm sorry, <laughs> but I really feel like this little ghosty, he needs his own video. Let me know what you think because I feel like I want to create some more things, like even like a, a series of things with this little ghosty. I feel like he needs centre page. He's the main character here. I prefer the little ghosty over all of the other pieces. This is me in bed again with you guys under the covers for maximum darkness just to see the glow. Now, bear in mind, I had these out of the mold for around about an hour in the sun. So I had them in my craft room, letting the natural light hit that. Because obviously you do need your glow in the dark powder does need to be attacked with some natural light or torch light before it will glow in the dark. I don't I think if you left it in a dark drawer and then opened the drawer, it, it would lose its glow after a while. I believe that's how glow in the dark pigments and powders work. Don't quote me on it. Um, but yeah, this was me after about 30 minutes after demold, I grabbed them and I ran under the covers to the darkest place I knew to look at this glow. <sighs> I love them so much. I love them so much. Apart from the awkwardly clawed <laughs> bat hybrid thing that I created. Apart from that, I like all three for their own, in their own way, for their own reasons. But the ghosties, the ghosties need their own video. I hope you agree. I really appreciate it if you've stayed this long. And I hope I've inspired you in some way to get your pipe, your, your little piping bottles out and do some jesmonite piping. The other question I had was, could we do this with resin? Yes, you could. You could let your resin thicken up to the point of being able to pipe with it. And also do that kind of sticky resin cobweb design that would be pretty cool I've never tried it before but I definitely want to explore that little ghosty design maybe in some other items but I also want to explore how these powders work with epoxy resin I've already done a short so if you are kind of new here I am going to be doing some YouTube shorts on the days that I don't release my general videos, which is Mondays, Wednesdays, Saturdays is my longer videos. In between those days, I'm gonna be releasing some shorts. And I've already tried the glow in the dark powder in some resin and oh my gosh, it's amazing. It is incredible guys, incredible. And I just cannot wait to explore more. So I'm gonna stop talking because I get a little bit hyper. Do you know what I mean? I get a little bit ahead of myself, a little bit too excited. But thank you all so much. If you are still here, do not forget to hit that thumbs up. I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know which design is your favorite. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.